Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for the UFC 290 main event for the featherweight title. Alexander Volkanovsky coming back down to his weight class after very, very closely missing that lightweight title against Makachev. Um, this time he's defending his belt against Jair Rodriguez, which is a hell of a fight. I mean, I, I really, I can't wait for it. I, I think that Volkanovsky is, of course, one of the best MMA fighters on the planet right now. And and we have a, all have a lot that we can learn from this guy's game. But then Yaya Rodriguez, he just brings something special to the table, something that you can't you can't count out, not at any point in the fight, as we learned from the Korean zombie fight. Um, we're going to get into this in a second. Very, very excited about it. I want to give a shout out to our sponsors for the show, Raid Shadow Legends. I love this game. I, I tell you every time they're sponsoring us, I love this game. Here it is on my home screen. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked on this. I log in every day. I do the daily challenges. I get the weekly and monthly challenges done when I can. So I get the ancient shards and I'm constantly upgrading my champions. Now, the thing I'm telling you about today is Call of the Arbiter, which is a limited animated series. They're, they're about six or seven minutes long per episode. You've got to check them out, especially if you're a fan of the game, because it gives you background into some of these some of these uh, champions. Like Ar um, Artak is the new one you're going to get. Gallic is one that I've been building up for a while. So Gallic was the champion I started with, and I kind of built my teams around him. With Call of the Arbiter, you get some background story of some of these some of these champions, and it it gives you better understanding of how you know how they compete, you know what what their skills are, and who they work best with as well. This is something else I'm. I'm learning now with my, uh, my my Raid Shadow Legends obsession. Um, Call of the Arbiter comes out once a week. You've got to make sure you check it out. You get free goodies every time you watch it. So you watch the episode, you're going to get some cash. You know, you, you share the episode, you're going to get some artifacts. And then when it hits a certain amount of views, you're going to get some more treasure as well. It is a really cool series. You can watch it on YouTube. It's got millions and millions of views. People are really enjoying it. And as I said, the best thing is, it gives me some background information about these champions. It gives me the backstory. So when I'm taking them into the, the, the arena to compete, I know better how these, these guys are going to team up. Um, it's very, very cool. And in fact, let me just show you, uh, let me show you Artax. So if you log in seven days between now and July 24th, is that right, Jamie? July 24th, um, you will get Artax for free. There's Artax right now. I'm, I'm working on him. I'm upgrading him. He's not quite at five uh, stars yet, but... Um, He's, he's almost there. He's a really cool character. He's got some cool skills. And then, of course, you're going to get some good accessories from watching Call of the Arbiter episodes. You can attach them to him, and you're going to supercharge him. It's a really, really cool uh, uh, show, and you're going to thoroughly enjoy this game. So download it. If you click on the link, the QR code below, the link in the, in the description or the QR code on the screen, you're going to get a whole bunch of in-game swag. All right. Tail of the tape, let's get back to this. So, Alexander Volkanovsky against Yaya Rodriguez. So, Volkanovsky's coming in with a record of 25-2. and two. Yaya Rodriguez is coming in with a record of 15-3 and three with one no contest. Now, there's no reach advantage here. Both of these guys are at 71 inches. However, Yaya Rodriguez is 5 inches taller than Volkanovsky, who stands at 5'6". Um, that could be really, really useful for Rodriguez. First of all, because the majority of that that height is in limbs. You know, he's, he's going to have longer legs. He's going to be able to reach um, Volkanovski much easier with a lot of the flamboyant stuff that we know uh, Yaya Rodriguez is very good at. But we can also we can also not neglect that his ability to fight at close range as well. Like there are, there are elbows and knees that we've got to watch out for that can be really problematic for Volkanovski, who of course has to close that range down to get to Yaya Rodriguez. So as far as their statistics go, now Yaya Rodriguez has got a 63% takedown defense, and and that's going to give you the impression that that uh, Volkanovski is going to be able to take him down, ground him, and beat him up there. We've seen this happen before. Of course, Yaya Rodriguez has been working on these skills, but something that I noticed getting into the research for Yaya Rodriguez is how how good he is at reversing takedowns once they've been landed. What 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 it's made me realize is. There are times when Yaya Rodriguez gets taken down. It will get listed as a takedown scored for his opponent, but there's no benefit in them having expended that effort because he just gets back to his feet. Like There was a, a really good takedown exchange against the Korean Zombie where Zombie tried to ground him a few times. Eventually, he's able to get him to the floor for half a second and Rodriguez pops up and gets back to his feet. You know, Charles Rosa as well. Rosa took him down. Rodriguez just rolled straight through into mount position, started landing elbows. So 
although that's a 63% takedown defense is not ideal against someone like Volkanovski, you would like it to be, you know, above 85, certainly. Um, it doesn't mean that he's just going to get taken down at will because he's very, very good at reversing things. And what we saw in his last fight against Josh Emmett as well is that, you know, he's got submissions off his back, especially if he's hurt his opponent standing. I mean, he, he caught Emmett with a clean elbow and a clean knee before the finish of that fight. And by the time it hit the floor, it was almost like Josh Emmett was kind of, he was a bit dazed. He was getting pushed away and hit with elbows and hammer fists. And the triangle was almost like a, it just kind of sealed his fate a little bit. It wasn't like, you know, it would have been difficult to predict that he was going to win by triangle. But then when you watch the way the fight plays out and you see how Josh Emmett's just kind of trying to survive in his guard, you think to yourself, you know what? This this is a, a really useful skill set for Yair Rodriguez against Volkanovski, who does like to apply that top game against people that are dangerous on the feet. Um, now... When it comes to Volkanovski's movement, th this is really where I think it's most problematic for Yaya Rodriguez because Rodriguez is a slick striker, but he doesn't utilise his footwork as well as he could. Like, if you watch his fight against Max Holloway, he tends to kind of wait and he's standing in front of him. But because he's so fast, he's able to whip his legs up and slap him in the side of the face. And, like, the speed of, of Yaya Rodriguez is going to be beneficial to him, but his movement is going to be problematic because Volkanovski's so good at circling and pulling and pushing his opponents. Like the clip I always go back to is that's that the start of the second round against Jose Aldo. Because Aldo is one of my favourite fighters. He's a very, very slick and and uh, well-trained striker. But if you watch the start of that second round, you can see Volkanovski kind of pushes him and pulls him and moves him around and makes him vulnerable for the low kick, makes him vulnerable for the right hand. And, and you... you in that moment, if you put yourself in Aldo's mind, you can see him kind of stuck a little bit. He's like he's like waiting for the opportunity to get into the fight, which you know is very very difficult to do against Volkanovski because of his movement. Now, if I'm Yaya Rodriguez and I'm standing in front of Volkanovski and allowing him just to kind of move as he wants, I'm always going to be a step behind him because Volkanovski uses that footwork and that movement to keep his opponents following him, right? If Volkanovski moves over here, then I've got to turn and face him. Then he's over there and I've got to turn and face him. And he's constantly zigzagging back. So before I can even get a bead on him, before I can even like get my tracking onto him, he's already moved and he's gone somewhere else. And as I'm turning to face him, then he's attacking me from that angle. I, th this is really where Volkanovski does his best work, in my opinion. That drifting around on the outside and shifting his line. I keep hitting the mic today, Jamie. Sorry. Keep shifting his line and moving around on the outside and... You find really, really good strikers, high-level, experienced fighters kind of kind of getting stuck behind him because he's the one that's leading the dance. Now, there are certain things that Yaya Rodriguez can do absolutely to slow that down. Attacking the base is going to be a big key. The danger of that, of course, is Volkanovski is going to start throwing things over the top or even potentially level changing and putting the fight on the floor. But I do feel like Yaya Rodriguez working the lead leg of Volkanovski, whichever leg is forward that oblique kick that he uses very well the chopping low kicks that he uses very well that he that he used against um against korean zombie they're going to be good tactics to kind of start taking some of that movement away from him it's also going to start opening things up because if you damage that lead leg then volkanovsky's hands will start to come down which means that yaya rodriguez can start throwing those head kicks around as well um the the flying and wild stuff of yaya rodriguez is it can, it can go one of two ways. It can work for him if he's able to stitch it into the rest of his game, or it can work against him if he feels like that's what he's going to just keep spamming all the way through the fight. It's going to make it easier for Volkanovski to get his hands on him. And of, of course, there is a risk there. I mean, you know, you remember the Josh Emmett fight where he throws that switch knee, cracks him in the face with the knee before he gets taken down. Like They're the dangers of trying to catch Yaya Rodriguez as he's flying through the air, is that you don't know what limb he's going to attack you with. Like we saw the same thing against Charles Rosa as we did in the finish of Andre Feely. He attacks the lead leg, his opponent reaches for the for the, the leg kick, and then they get caught with a, a head kick from the from the other side. Like his ability to switch his attack midair is is really, really difficult for his opponents to deal with. So that makes me feel like Volkanovski is going to try and take that away from him as quickly as he can. Volkanovski is going to kind of try and paint him into a corner where he can start cracking that right hand over the top. Remember the Darren Elkins one? 
wings it over the top and then level changing. And I think that Volkanovski is going to be trying to put Yaya Rodriguez up against the fence in the corner, but not sitting in his guard. You know, you go back into Volkanovski's career and you watch him fight um, Kennedy or, uh, is it Kasuya? I can't remember. There were a couple of fights early on in his career where, uh, when, when he first came into the UFC, where he was far more determined to ground and pound. I mean, this was partly his game when he when he came to the UFC, and those first first few fights, we saw a lot more of this ground and pound style from Volkanovski. I think that's going to be really useful in this one, partly because Yaya is just one off his back, which means that his confidence fighting off his back is going to be slightly higher than it would normally. But the other thing as well is that. To deal with with Yaya Rodriguez and the way that he fights, it makes sense to tire him out a bit first. Take some of that explosive plyometric ability away from him. You know, we saw Frankie Edgar do the same kind of thing. I think Volkanovski can learn a few things from that fight, and I think he will. I think the smart thing for him to do is to close Rodriguez down as quickly and as safely as he can, set up the level change with that right hand over the top like we saw him do against Elkins and then put the fight on the floor so he can dominate from top position. And when we see Volkanovski dominate from top position, we see him spreading his base out and pressing and posting into his opponent. It's very, very anti-jiu-jitsu. It's very good at dealing with people that are trying to pull you in to a grappling match from the bottom. And, and Volkanovski's good at refusing it. He posts and punches and posts and elbows and stays above and over them. So they feel the weight of Volkanovski on top of them and they feel those strikes coming down. But at no point can they get underneath him. They can't pull him into a half guard. They're not going to get an underhook and start to work sweeps because he's just very good at posting and keeping people away. So the most logical thing for Volkanovski to do in this fight is to put Yaya Rodriguez on the floor up against the fence. Now, easier said than done, of course, and the biggest risk, the biggest risk is not necessarily being on the floor in top position against Yaya Rodriguez. It's closing him down to put him on the floor. That's when you're going to get caught with the wild stuff, the skip knees, the switch head kicks, the the, the, the wild and crazy spinning and flipping weird elbows that, that he throws in there, as well as the knees that we're starting to see him utilize a lot more. I, 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 felt like, I felt like the fight against Josh Emmett was was Yaya Rodriguez arriving at his complete MMA game. That's at least how it felt to me. And, and you know, Rodriguez has always been a good fighter. He's been a good martial artist since he joined the UFC. But he struggled with putting it together. His emotion has always been a challenge for him, trying to keep control of his emotion and not get too not get too like drawn into the 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 I don't know what the right way of saying it is. It always sticks out in my mind when he fought um, Jeremy Stevens in Mexico City because there was such huge pressure on his shoulders you know, at that event. And, and I, just, he, I just don't feel like he dealt with it very well, if I'm honest. Like, you know, his family were, were, were cage side and the fight was ended with a no contest, the eye poke, and there was, just, there was no doubt it was an eye poke. I saw Jeremy Stevens the day after and his, his eyeball was about hanging out of his socket. But the emotion of 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 Uriah of um of Uriah of the emotion of Yair after that just kind of showed me that it's like the pressure can get to him a little bit, and that's how it seemed. It's it, it was acting like he let the arena down, and and it was just an unfortunate circumstance. With Volkanovski, he he's very good at staying calm and mellow and professional, and this is where Volkanovski can start to draw the energy out of Yair Rodriguez. Not necessarily letting him kind of do what he wants and throw himself around flying kicks and stuff, but frustrate him where he, where Yaya Rodriguez feels like the fight's being stolen from him, right? If Volkanovski's able to close him down and smother his technique on the feet and then put him on the floor, each time Volkanovski's able to do that, it's going to take a little bit of the confidence from Rodriguez. And that little bit of confidence that you take away from him is going to be replaced with frustration and anger. And that frustration and anger will make him even more reckless on the feet which makes it easier for Volkanovski to catch him and take him down or potentially counter him. In the Josh Emmett fight, though, I felt like Rodriguez had turned a corner. And I feel like we saw really good long-range striking from him, very measured long-range striking. But we also saw a decent takedown offense, him limp-legging out and posting and making sure he was clear. But then when Josh Emmett was hurt against the fence, stepped in with that little hand play, elbow, knees, punches up the center line, like all of a sudden, I felt like Yaya Rodriguez had arrived 
with a full MMA game. And then when the fight hit the floor with Josh Emmett being dazed and hurt, he was caught in that triangle, beautifully set up. And then we've got Yaya Rodriguez that can finish the fight wherever it goes. Like that is a very, very dangerous individual. And he's got he's got to try and maintain that calmness of of mind all the way through this fight against Volkanovsky. He can't let the the moment get to him. He can't let the pressure get to him. The idea of getting his hands on the actual featherweight belt is, you know. I mean, there's just so much to be to be gained from here. Even more to be gained from it, given the fact that Volkanovsky's just lost a close split decision to Makachev, because that puts Volkanovsky right in the mix at uh, lightweight as well. Which means that if Yaya Rodriguez is able to take him out, that means Yaya Rodriguez has got much different options than he does right now on the table, potentially even going up to lightweight and fighting there as well. So it's an exciting time for Yaya Rodriguez and he's got to make sure he keeps control of that excitement because that excitement can be drained out of him if Volkanovski starts to win the first couple of rounds. Um, so... If I am Yaya Rodriguez and I'm and I'm, and I'm dealing with uh, with, with Volkanovski, I'm going to try and dismantle his movement. I'm going to try and take that lead leg away as much as I can, as quickly as I can. That chasse kick, that oblique kick that he uses very well, he used it against Charles Rosa. That's going to be a key in this one. His low kicks are going to be a key, the ones that he used against uh, um, Korean Zombie. And, and something else that he used well against Korean Zombie is fainting the low kick to come up the center line. Snap front kicks up the center line are going to be good. Teeps into the midsection are going to be good. And anything where he can hide his attacks to the head are going to be really useful. You know, working to the legs and the body might even encourage Volkanovski to start reaching for those kicks, which means you can start whipping them around and coming up to the head. And and the speed of Yaya Rodriguez's legs is really problematic for Volkanovski because you, you can't predict where they're going to go. You can reach for one kick and get hit by, hit by the other. So... It might be a case of him trying to chase the kicks back once they've landed on his guard, but that's a decision that Volkanovski has to make and not an easy one to make, especially if you feel certain that you can catch the kick. It's um, it's an interesting problem for Volkanovski to, to, to figure out how he's going to approach this one. I feel like like once he gets ahead on the scorecards, once he's got a round or two in the bag, then it makes his life a lot easier. But if Rodriguez comes in with that same calmness that we saw against Josh Emmett, then we're gonna have um, we're gonna have a real fight on our hands because that's that person's difficult to get to. And any time you try and approach him, he's got something that he can whip up in your face or walk you onto that could potentially be a fight ender. Now, the one other thing I, I keep coming back to as well is is Volkanovski's in an interesting situation because he's dominated featherweight now, dominated featherweight to the point where he moved up to lightweight and was con- you know was competitive against the lightweight champion. So now does he feel the same kind of threat as he would if he was fighting Max Holloway for the second or third time or Makachev for the lightweight belt? Does he have that same kind of threat in his mind when he's fighting Yaya Rodriguez? I don't know. I don't think that Volkanovski would look look past him, look over him, but I certainly think he would see Yaya Rodriguez as being easier to beat than Max Holloway and Makachev. And, and I, I hope that that's not his mentality coming into this one because he might be very much surprised. Like, I think Volkanovski is going to be going to be vulnerable to skip knees, flying knees, spinning elbows, head kicks if he's reaching for leg kicks or body kicks. And, you know, what's the rest of the game of Yaya Rodriguez looking like? Like, what more do we do we have to see of his ground game? Because that triangle against Josh Emmett was beautiful. Like you, you've got to think that that's going to give him confidence that he can fight this fight anywhere. That could work against him, of course, if he's on the floor and he's accepting being on the floor when he might be better scrambling back to his feet. But you've got to expect young Yaya Rodriguez, born in 1992, he's going to continually be adding things to his game. And he's going to have been watching Volkanovski as the guy at the top of the division that's beaten Max Holloway several times, that has now been very competitive at middleweight, at middleweight, at lightweight. Yaya Rodriguez is going to come in and, and think to himself, right, I can beat this guy, but I've got to give my best performance ever. And I, I would say he's coming probably off his best MMA performance ever. So going into this fight, he's got that confidence. He has to utilize it in the right ways. What haven't I talked about? Let me just pull up my... Uh... Oh, that was the other thing. that I, the, the, See, the, this is, there's always something else in the notes. That was something else that we saw Yaya Rodriguez using really well against Josh Emmett because, because people know Yaya Rodriguez is such a good kicker. 
when he throws a kick, they see the kick come out, they see it retract, and then they go, right, this is my time, and they close range. We saw this a couple of times against Josh Emmett where he got touched with a kick. It didn't hurt him, but then he moved straight into range onto punches. Like Rodriguez has started utilizing punches after kicks because he knows people are going to close range. Like this is another thing that's going to be really useful to keep Volkanovski on the outside. Now, there, there isn't a reach advantage on either side. They've both got a 71 inch reach, but the five inches height advantage has got to equate to predominantly leg length for uh, Yaya Rodriguez. So by by delivering those kicks in a smart way, he's gonna make it's gonna make Volkanovski feel like he's a lot further away than than he would like to be. You know, front kicks, side kicks, oblique kicks, low kicks, snapping things up to the head, all really useful against uh, for Yaya Rodriguez. But then chaining punches onto the end of it for when his opponent's trying to chase those kicks back, that could be a game changer as well. And you know, you go back to the the Korean zombie fight as well. Like there were a couple of times he tried that spinning elbow, that turning elbow. He recognized that Korean Zombie was crashing forward. And if Volkanovsky does that, which he does, he moves forward very aggressively. If Volkanovsky is able to, if Volkanovsky is too aggressive, Yaya Rodriguez is going to run him onto something. And I always expect there to be something new in Yaya Rodriguez's game that we haven't seen yet. Just like the, the elbow against Korean Zombie, I, I feel like there are going to be other things that he's going to be able to utilize against Alexander Volkanovsky. I think this is a lot more competitive than people will be thinking. I, 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 the feeling I get generally from the MMA community is that Volkanovski is just going to be a bit too much for him because we've seen Rodriguez go up and down. We've seen him get emotional. We've seen him get frustrated. And, and, and that to me kind of gives me the same impression. I'm like, well, yeah, but you know, that emotion is going to work against him against Volkanovski. But then that performance against Josh Emmett, I just kind of feel like he's turned a corner. And, and, I, and I don't know whether that, that turning of the corner is going to exemplify his confidence and make him a little more reckless and a little too overconfident or whether he's going to realise that as long as he plays his, his best hand, he's able to beat anybody in this division. And if he gets a win over Volkanovski, I mean, you know, it opens up doors for him left and right. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge opportunity for him. Managing the stress and the excitement of that opportunity that, I feel, is the biggest challenge for Yaya Rodriguez going into this fight. For Volkanovski, it's about trying to figure out what is going to be flying at his head and knowing when to close distance safely. Because there are very few moments to close distance safely against Yaya Rodriguez, especially if he's calm and calculated, because then he can deliver stuff that you can't even predict is coming in your direction. It's going to be a really good fight, this one is. It's going to be a really good fight. I'm, I'm a big fan of both of these guys. And because they've got such different fighting styles, I, I, I kind of don't know what to expect. And I can't, I'm hopeful that we're going to get the fight that that this fight has the potential to deliver. Because, um, I mean, featherweight division is just is hot right now. And, uh, and the featherweight division and the lightweight division aren't too far apart. And you can imagine some more crossover fights happening here. And I think Yaya Rodriguez is still very much at the beginning of his career, given the fact that he's he's just arrived at this kind of well-rounded MMA fighter stage that we saw it uh, in the Josh Emmett fight. Exciting. Very, very exciting. And make sure you check out our sponsors. I've got to give them another plug. Raid Shadow Legends. You know I love this game. I'm on it all the time. I do all my daily challenges, weekly and monthly challenges. I get all the free shards and all the free money and everything. And I keep building my champions. And the Call of the Arbiter, the limited uh, animated series. Make sure you check it out. If you like an origin story, you want to know about these champions, they're, 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 they're out every Thursday. Make sure you check them out. It's, they're cool little an animated episodes that will give you some background of these champions. There are five new champions being added to the game from the series. And the first one that you can get a hold of is Artak. Log in seven times between now and July 24th and you will get him. And if you're new to the game, Go to the link below, click on the QR code, and you'll get a whole bunch of stuff that will get your journey started. And you'll be just as addicted to this game as I am. Anyway, enjoy Raid Shadow Legends. Enjoy Volkanovski against Yaya Rodriguez. Enjoy UFC 290. And I'll see you next time.